Hi people, it's Archivist here coming at you with Grand Theft Auto 5 for the PC. And in this video I'm going to be talking pretty much exclusively about the graphics options because of course one of the greatest advantages of buying this game on the PC is the ability to tweak your settings. Get a higher frame rate if you want or if you care more about the visuals you can turn the visuals way up, of course hardware permitting. And in this game I've tried both ways, I've tried turning the graphics settings way up to make it look really nice and I've also tried turning them a bit down so I can get the performance up to a fairly consistent 60 and what I found is that I do more so prefer getting a consistent 60 but getting to that consistent 60 was no easy task because this is a game where the frame rate can be quite varied. I mean, you have to take into account there are some areas where there's lots of water, so water effects will be more demanding. Uh, there's green areas where grass will be more demanding. You've got the city where there's a larger population. So getting a consistent frame rate is, is quite tricky in this. You can think you've got it and then drive out to another area in the open world and realise, oh god, look, it's tanking again. Oh, what am I doing? You have to turn something down. And so there are a few settings I notice which you can get rid of, which really don't impact the visuals that much, but really improve upon performance. And I think of all of those, the best ratio is probably post FX, things like depth of field, bloom, high dynamic range. I would go ahead and turn that down to normal or mo more so if you need to, because I mean, when you think about depth of field, yes, it's a nice effect. It's especially good because it, of course, simulates our ability to perceive depth with our eyes. But if you take it away, it's not something you'll necessarily miss. If you called someone over and said, is there anything wrong with the visual presentation of this game? They might mention the shadows, they might mention the aliasing, but very rarely will they say there's no depth of field effect because it's a nice thing to introduce, but it's not a necessity, I believe, of the visual presentation. I think post FX, the entire umbrella of what that encompasses, it just isn't that necessary. Things like shadows and textures I consider to be important. If you see a muddy texture, it's hard to not see it, you know what I mean? And that's actually something I'll say about in this game, you can really turn the texture settings way up and see very little impact on performance, especially if you've got a decent amount of VRAM. Although, going back to shadows, uh, and there are two separate settings for shadows, well actually there's more so, but there's two main ones, you've got soft shadows and you've got regular shadows. And soft shadows, I would go ahead and try and take advantage of your graphics card's proprietary shadow system. So there's an AMD one and an NVIDIA one, I think it's like PCSS shadows. And I would go ahead and do that because it will give you much better performance and better visuals. It's just a no-brainer. There's also the regular shadows, and you can turn that down from very high to high and see very little visual impact, but an enormous, or not enormous, but a decent performance increase. So I would go ahead and do that if you're looking to optimize. Uh, something I must, I have to admit, criticize about GTA 5 across all platforms is the aliasing. So you see a lot of shimmering in GTA 5, and that's as a result of very fast movements because extreme motion and also the absurd amount of detail in this game because of course you've got loads of buildings, lots of railings, lots of fine amounts of detail and you have to commend the developers for putting it in but it just means you'll see more shimmering surfaces. I'm not complaining to Rockstar because it, as I say commendable it's there but aliasing does pop up unfortunately and there are ways of dealing with it. The most basic way is FXAA but that will not eliminate it by any stretch of the imagination especially if you're going at 1080p like I am. Uh, you can move up to MSAA, and if you do it times two, I wouldn't even say that's worth it. There's very little improvement on that. Uh, you can, If you have an NVIDIA card, uh, you can turn on TXAA, usually a really effective form of anti-aliasing, but in this, not so good at all. And the thing is, you have to go up very high with the MSAA, so times four, times eight, and by that point, you're seeing a massive impact on performance. And I think unless you're willing to go for the 30 frames per second over 60, or if you have a really, really good setup, so like SLI, Titan X, something like that, then I, I imagine most people are going to go with FXAA and are simply going to have to live with the shimmering. It's not a terrible thing. It doesn't ruin the game. Please don't get me wrong there. It doesn't ruin the game. But it is, of all things, GTA 5's greatest visual weakness. 
And I am being critical towards the graphics here because, hey, we all know that GTA 5 is an amazing game. And if I was just going to sit here and praise the gameplay that we already know about, it would be like preaching to the choir. We all know it's an amazing game. So really, I'm here just to analyze the visuals. Uh, so I think overall, well, I'm certain this is a good port. This is what a developer should be doing, giving us lots of options to choose from. So whether you've got the greatest SLI setup with the highest end cards, or maybe just a laptop, a gaming laptop with modest specs, you'll be able to play this game by you know, turning down the graphics and getting a decent performance. I think it's called scalability, you know, uh, the option to play across a large range of computers, and that really does symbolize a good port. Also, there doesn't seem to be what I'd say out of place stuttering in this game because you've got in place stuttering and out of place stuttering. When you've got a VSync on and you've got a fluctuating frame rate, it's just inevitable. You have to turn down your settings, that's just on you and your hardware. But sometimes games like, for example, I don't know about anymore, but Dying Light, of course, what Assassin's Creed Unity used to have, I had out of place stuttering where you just could not get rid of it. And it was the way you could notice it was by turning your head around 360 degrees, or rather turning the camera around, and it would become very obvious. But if you do it here, I, I personally can't notice it. Uh, so I think that covers all the essential stuff about the game's visuals. Uh, what you're seeing here is what I want the game to look like in terms of performance but with decent graphics. If you'd prefer to see the game with its best visuals, I made a, a video about violence in video games and that shows the game running at 30 frames per second but higher graphics. So if you'd rather see it like that then I'd advise going and watching that video. I'll put a link up to it right now. So as always people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.